Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS presenting to you the daily quiz for 13th of March 2022. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Consider the following statements with respect to Saras 3. Number 1, it is a radio telescope that is mounted on India's first multi-wavelength astronomical observatory Astrosat. Number 2, it was built to detect extremely faint radio wave signals from the cosmic dawn. Number 3, Saras 3 can be deployed on water bodies. Which of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? See, this article in the Hindu newspaper today talks about Saras, which is a radio telescope built by the researchers at Raman Research Institute or RRI. And that is why we've taken this question. Before we discuss, please pause the video, mark your answers and let us know in the comment section how many questions you could get right. Also let us know if you find these videos helpful for your preparation. Now coming back to Saras. Saras stands for Shaped Antenna Measurement of the Background Radio Spectrum. Its objective is the discovery of radio wave signals from the cosmic dawn. And what is this cosmic dawn? Cosmic dawn is the time in the infancy of your universe. That is when the first stars and galaxies came into existence. And detecting a radio wave signal from the cosmic dawn is extremely difficult. Why? Because the celestial signal is exceptionally faint. It is buried in the sky radio waves that come to us from the gas in our own galaxy that is the milky way which are a million times brighter besides this cosmic signal is in a radio wavelength band used by numerous terrestrial communication equipments and also tv and fm radio stations that is why it makes detecting the extraterrestrial signals extremely difficult and this is exactly the reason why many groups around the world have designed highly sensitive radio telescopes to detect these signals and these have been placed at various different locations including an island in the antarctic ocean and also in a desert in australia and saras is one such effort and saras 3 is an updated version of saras now let us go back to the question and answer it See the Saras that we just discussed about has been deployed at Ladakh and also at Timbuktu Collective in Andhra Pradesh. But please remember Saras is not mounted on Astrosat. It is the ultraviolet imaging telescope or UVIT which is mounted on Astrosat that is India's first multi-wavelength astronomical observatory. So statement number 1 becomes incorrect. Now moving on to statement number 2. Statement number 2 as we've already discussed is correct. And the last statement statement number 3 is also correct because Saras 3 which is an updated version of Saras can be deployed on water bodies. It is believed that water could be an ideal medium to make such sensitive measurements. So this statement is correct giving us the answer to our question which is option B 2 and 3 only. Moving on to question number 2. Consider the following statements with respect to NASA's Perseverance rover. Number 1 it was designed as a part of NASA's Mars 2020 mission to explore the Jezero crater on Mars number 2 it uses the heat of plutonium's radioactive decay for electric power number 3 the rover is carrying ingenuity the first helicopter to fly on Mars which of the given statements is or are incorrect why this question this article in the daily edition of the hindu newspaper today has a reference to nasa's perseverance rover and that is why we've taken this question see nasa's perseverance is an suv sized mars rover it was designed to explore the jezero crater on the red planet and this rover was designed as a part of the mars 2020 mission by nasa so statement number 1 becomes correct now coming to statement number 2 The Perseverance rover is fueled by electric power. So it carries a radio isotope power system and this power system produces a dependable flow of electricity using the heat of plutonium's radioactive decay as its fuel. And this power source is called as multi-mission radio isotope thermoelectric generator or MMRTG. And this MMRTG converts the heat from natural radioactive decay of plutonium into electricity. In very simple terms, the rover uses the heat of plutonium's radioactive decay for electric power. So statement number 2 becomes correct. Statement number 3 is also correct because this rover carried Ingenuity which is a solar powered helicopter and the first helicopter to fly on Mars. This Ingenuity will help in collecting the samples from various different locations where the rover cannot reach. And just yesterday it was announced that Ingenuity successfully completed its 21st flight on Mars. 
So the right answer to our question would be option D, none of the above because the question is asking us for incorrect statements. If you wish to know more about the NASA's Perseverance rover, we've already discussed this on the 8th August daily quiz. The link to the video will appear on the top right corner of your screens. Moving on to question number 3. Consider the following statements with respect to Pandavlani Caves. These caves are early examples of Indian rock cut architecture and represent Mahayana Buddhist tradition. Number 2. The caves have the magnificent idols of Buddha and the popular Jain Tirthankaras such as Virshabadev. Number 3. These caves house the paintings of the Gupta period. Which of the given statements is or are incorrect? Why this question? There is a reference to the Pandavlani caves in today's The Hindu newspaper. Please take note of such details and revise them regularly because ancient history and art and culture are also important for your prelims. Now let us discuss more about these Pandavlani caves. These Pandavlani caves are ancient rock cut caves on the Trirashmi hills in Maharashtra. They are also known as Trirashmi caves or Nashik caves. These caves were first documented by Captain James Delamine in the year 1823. So these Pandavlani caves are a group of 24 caves and these caves reflect the Hinayana sect of Buddhism. The main cave called the Chaitya has a beautiful Buddhist stupa inside. And these caves have beautiful sculptures, chambers as well as unique water structures. Also note that these caves house idols of Buddha and the idols of Jain Tirthankaras like Vrishabhadev. It also houses the icons of Bodhisattva, Veer Mahabhadraji, who was a great king who was devoted to Jain religion and doctrines and also Ambika Devi of Jainism. Now let us go back to the question and answer it. Statement number one is incorrect because this is associated with Hinayana Buddhist tradition and not Mahayana. Statement number two, as we just discussed, is correct. It also houses popular Jain Tirthankara such as Rishabdev along with the idols of Buddha and icons of Bodhisattva. And statement number three here would be incorrect because there are only two known examples of cave paintings of the Gupta period in ancient India. And Pandavlani Caves is not one of those examples. If you've solved the previous year question papers, you will know the answer to this. Let me know in the comment section which are those two caves that house the paintings of the Gupta period. Since Pandavlani caves do not house the paintings of the Gupta period, this statement would be incorrect. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option A, 1 and 3 only because the question is asking us for incorrect statements. Moving on to question number 4. River Umiyam flows through which of these states? Number 1. Assam Number 2, Meghalaya. Number 3, Mizoram. Number 4, Arunachal Pradesh. What is the context? There is an article in the Hindu newspaper today that talks about the brooms that are made in Karbi Anglong district of Assam. And this article has a reference to river Umiyam. And that is why we've taken this question. Hope you've marked your answers already. This river Umiyam is an important river of Meghalaya that courses towards the north. So this river Umiyam flows through the states of Meghalaya and Assam. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option A, 1 and 2 only. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2020. In India, separation of judiciary from the executive is enjoined by option A, the preamble of the constitution. Option B, a directive principle of state policy. Option C, the seventh schedule. Option D, the conventional practice. The right answer to this question would be option B, directive principle of state policy. See, Article 50 prescribes the separation of judiciary from the executive, which is a part of the directive principles of state policy. And the separation of judiciary from executive is not mentioned in the preamble, neither is it a part of the seventh schedule. Therefore, the right answer would be option B. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today, which is CRISPR-Cas9. Why have we taken up this topic for discussion? Because there is a reference to CRISPR-Cas9 in this article in the Hindu newspaper today. Now let us discuss more about this technology in detail. We all know that genes contain the bio-information that defines any individual. It defines the physical attributes like the height, the skin color or hair color and also the subtle features like intelligence, eyesight and susceptibility to certain diseases. Also, certain behavioral traits can be attributed to the information that is encoded in the genetic material, right? And CRISPR-Cas9 is a tool for gene editing. 
Why is this technology significant? See, an ability to alter this information gives the scientist the power to control some of these features. So what exactly is this CRISPR-Cas9? CRISPR is the short form of clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats. And this technology is a relatively new and the most efficient tool for gene editing. And this technology replicates a natural defense mechanism in the bacteria to fight virus attacks using a special protein called as Cas9. Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Donda were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in the year 2020 for discovering this gene technology's sharpest tools that is CRISPR-Cas9 genetic scissors. So the researchers using this technology can change the DNA of animals, plants and also microorganisms with extremely high precision. So how exactly does this work? CRISPR-Cas9 technology behaves like a cut and paste mechanism on the DNA strands. And these DNA strands contain genetic information. See, the specific location of the genetic codes that need to be changed or edited is identified on the DNA strand. And then, using the Cas9 protein, which acts like a pair of scissors, this location is cut off from the strand. But this DNA strand, when it is broken, has this natural tendency to repair itself. But that is when the scientists intervene during this auto repair process and they supply the desired sequence of genetic codes that binds itself with a broken DNA strand. And this technology is believed to be an incredibly precise gene editing technology. And this is already being talked about as the technology that will revolutionize human existence in the near future. The most promising use of this CRISPR technology is in the treatment of diseases and in healthcare. But are there any concerns associated with this technology? Yes, the technology is extremely precise, but it is not 100% precise every time. And there is a possibility that some other gene also gets targeted and in such a scenario, unintended impacts cannot be ruled out. And this may increase the risk of mutations elsewhere in the genome in those cells. Another concern is that this mutation can make changes in the genome of the next generation altogether. Another major concern is the highly problematic issue of trying to produce those designer babies or designer human beings by manipulating the human embryos for their own interests and this raises ethical concerns. However, despite all of these concerns, it cannot be denied that this is a path-breaking technology and this will help in altering genes in order to tackle a number of conventional as well as unconventional problems, especially in the healthcare sector. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.